Welcome to this quick start introduction tutorial for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we take a look at rendering and architectural design in V-Ray for Rhino and how to get productive rendering in no time. Open the scene file building.3dm found in the downloaded assets from the tutorials webpage linked below. Once you have V-Ray for Rhino installed, you'll want to switch from the Rhino render to V-Ray by going to the render menu current renderer and select V-Ray for Rhino. A floating toolbar appears that you can dock into the Rhino UI. The main tab gives access to the asset editor, a couple of render icons, show the V-Ray frame buffer or VFB icon, and edit materials. We have a tab for adding lights, V-Ray objects like an infinite plane or fur, and a couple of extra tools. In the main tab, open the Asset Editor. This is the nerve center for V-Ray for Rhino. Now the Asset Editor is divided into four sections. The materials, allowing you to create and edit all the V-Ray materials in the scene, as well as seeing a preview of that material here in this box. Next is the Lights tab, which accesses any lights in the scene. Then V-Ray Geometry tab to add items in the scene such as fur, and the last tab is settings to adjust your render settings and such. Here you can show the VFB with this icon or launch production or interactive renders from here. Click this icon to start an interactive render and the scene renders to the VFB. Adjusting the scene will update the render interactively in the VFB as you work. Now that we have an image, the first place to start is with the scene's illumination. Let's begin with enabling a sunlight. Expand the environment rollout and click the map button here to set a texture for our environment. Click this icon to select the sky texture from this list. Now these options are also available in the light settings but let's just go ahead and adjust them here. Enable the sun and it updates in the VFB. Set the size multiplier to 5 to soften the shadows cast by the sunlight. Scroll down to Ground Albedo and set that to a light blue color for a more natural look. Notice that the scene is very blown out. For that, we need to adjust the camera and how it captures the light. Expand the camera rollout and adjust the exposure value or EV to 15 to reduce the light taken in by the lens. Things are starting to look much better in the interactive render. Now select the Panels menu and choose Sun to open its panel. I'll dock mine here to the Rhino UI. Click Manual Control to enable us to adjust the orientation of the sun in the sky to set the time of day. I'll set my sun like this. Now it looks a bit bright right now, but we'll be doing some more work with materials that will develop this look further, so we'll leave it as is. In the Asset Editor, go to the Materials tab. You can click the Add Material button to add a new material to the scene. Select Generic and it puts a generic material in our scene. Double click the name to rename it to Masses. You can also rename by right clicking to bring up these functions such as assigning the material, copying and pasting, and so on. Click on the Quick Settings tab. This tab shows the core parameters for the material to make editing easier, as well as a drop-down menu here that you can simply select settings from any of these preset material types. Select plastic from the list, which we can change by adjusting its parameters to suit our needs. Make diffuse color a bright gray, adjust the reflection down a bit, and set the glossiness to 0.9 to diffuse our reflections a touch. Now we'll assign this material to a layer. Right click and choose Apply Material to Layer and select the Masses layer. After a brief moment, the VFB updates to show the plastic material in the scene. Click here to create another generic material and double click the name to rename it Trees. In the quick settings, set this to a medium gray diffuse color. Back in the material list tab, right click, choose apply material to layer and select the trees layer. Now check this out. 
Click on this arrow to expand out the material library, from which you can choose from a huge number of preset materials that you can use. Here I can choose from material categories and I'll select ground. Scroll through some of the material presets and find asphalt A02 100 centimeters and drag it into the material list on the right to use on our roads. Right click on the new material and apply it to the roads layer. Now the tiling of the texture doesn't look appropriate to our scene scale. So in the quick settings tab, click the diffuse colors map icon and in the texture settings, open the UVW rollout. Set the U and the V values to 50 each. Do the same for the bump map to have U and V values of 50 as well. Now this repeats the pattern on the roads to match the scene scale much better. Now go into the concrete category and scroll to find concrete simple A012 meters and drag it into the material list. Go ahead and apply that to the floors layer. Scroll in the library to find concrete simple F012 meters and drag that into the list. Assign this new concrete to the foundations layer. Now onto the windows. Go to the glass category and find glass tinted black and drag it into the list. Assign that to the windows layer. In the metal category, drag steel blurry into the list and assign it to the steel layer in the scene. Give the interactive render a moment to update and our building is taking on quite a nice look. The seemingly bright lighting from before is mitigated with these materials. Contract the material library and let's get into the render settings. Click the settings section and expand the camera rollout. Turn on depth of field. Now since this is a scale model, let's go for a bit of a tilt shift lens look and crank up the defocused value and settle on 0.8 which makes it all look blurry. That just means we need a better focus point. Click the pick focal button and in the scene, Choose a point on the primary building where you want the camera's focus. I'll pick right here and watch it update in the VFB. Now let's set a custom resolution for our render. Expand the render output rollout and for aspect ratio select custom. Set the aspect width to 0.8 and now you can change the image height to be 600 for a 480 by 600 resolution render. Since we changed the render size, we do need to stop the interactive render and launch it again. And here we see the image in portrait now. Okay, we have quite a bit of blue in the sky behind the scene, so we'll add some atmosphere to the render. Expand the environment rollout and turn on aerial perspective, which will add a sense of depth to the atmosphere. Now, by default, these are pretty intense settings, so adjust it by setting the sun to use the Rhino Document Sun, which is the sun that we already have in the scene, to get the proper lighting. Next, we can reduce the thickness of this atmosphere by setting the visibility range to something much higher, 85,000. Lastly, you can turn off Effect Background to bring the saturation of the blue background back into the render unaffected by the atmosphere. Now this leaves us with just a hint of depth to the atmosphere. Okay, now for a final render. Stop the interactive render with the stop icon in the VFB and turn off interactive as well as progressive in the asset editor. If you already have network rendering called Swarm like I have already set up, you can enable it here. Now, Swarm is a way to distribute renders across a network of rendering machines to make rendering much faster. However, you do not need it to render anything with V-Ray for Rhino. Now, set the quality to high and click the Render with V-Ray icon to start a production rendering. I'll elapse about 90 seconds here to get to the final result. But we can continue to tweak the image directly within the VFB by clicking the Show Corrections Control icon here. This expands a number of tools we can work with, starting with exposure. So expand that rollout and also enable it and set the exposure to about 0.36 to brighten this up just a touch. Then bring down the hot spots by lowering the highlight burn value to about 0.8.
Now let's adjust the white balance in this rollout to warm things up a bit with a temperature of about 7000. Next, expand color balance and click shadows to affect the darks in the scene. Set the slider like so. You can of course experiment with these values to your liking. Now let's add a curve to the image and set the curve to look like this to add some contrast and liven up the image a little bit more. And of course, to save your image, simply click the floppy disk icon and you're home in your luxurious high-rise penthouse. Thank you for joining us on this introductory quick start video on using V-Ray for Rhino.